In this video, we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff to take weight out of this Pro 2 SC10 from Team Associated. We're going to be looking at carbon fiber parts. We're going to be looking at what we can take off, what we can cut out, what we can remove, all to get weight off this truck so that it can go faster around the racetrack. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy and this is Roadside RC. You'll tend to find me bashing and crawling and drifting and racing plus doing product review videos and how to's and on the workbench is the basic two wheel drive short course truck before we do any of this we need to get a baseline of how much does this truck weigh out of the box and so as of right now this is the truck this is a truck without a battery. It is otherwise, I think, completely stock, except I added the transponder in here and changed the battery plug. Shocks are stock. Everything is in the stock location. So as it sits right now, we'll go ahead and put the truck on the scales along with the body, and we'll put the body on the body mounts. One of the cool things about this Pro 2 SC10 is that it does actually share the same platform as the team associated DR10 drag car, which means some of the carbon fiber parts from companies like Drag Race Concepts may actually fit over here on this chassis. First thing, as a good example, front and rear carbon fiber uh, shock towers. We're going to start up here on the front of the truck. It looks like in general the front shock tower does match this new one. It looks like we have the same rough mounting locations for the front shocks. Only thing I do notice is these front turnbuckles it looks like there's a little kick out down here where that turnbuckle actually mounts vertically down in it. And so we're, but there's holes here so you can actually adjust and mount it uh, sideways instead. And so it looks like that will all work. Other question is this front bumper mount, you know, on the drag cars, you don't run those very much. So we may end up getting rid of this front bumper mount uh, or looking at a way to fab up some of that support so that it can come back in there. Either way, we'll still leave the whole front bumper Bumper on, we'll just take that mount off. Make sure you watch these little spacers that come in right under those turnbuckles. We'll want to make sure if we see if we need those again as we reinstall it. Looking at these two parts now that it is off, uh, you can actually line this up and it does line up pretty well actually it is slightly shorter which is interesting so that means it's going to lower that whole front body mount down a little bit once we assemble it on there so that whole front's going to now be just slightly lower for the body should be i guess good for handling it does look like it has the shock mount positions including this screw right here that we need to transfer over uh, all for the body mount here so that is it looks like that's going to directly translate over there does not appear to be anywhere here for the uh, uh, front sh uh, bumper brace to fit in so that's something we got to watch this does have a little nub that sticks out right here to help align it to the front uh, of the chassis and it just has a hole here on this side so we will be leaving that open there we go look at that that looks so good that carbon fiber up there should also be taken off weight when you consider this is all that we're taking off of this in order to make this swap now a couple notes so uh, i did have there is three holes on either side three holes here one two three in order to mount these tie links tie rod links and uh, i did end up having to drill out and use the inside hole plus uh, that it's actually not meant to have a nut on the inside there for this front housing so i ended up having to uh, open up that housing just a little bit create some clearance for that nut to go in there now we have the proper front alignment <laughs> front steering and everything is still great just like it was before everything up here is looking good All 
All right, rear shock tower okay. is installed. It was pretty straightforward, honestly. Um, I had to raid my screw bin for a couple screws to mount the the whole shock tower to this uh, aluminum mounting bracket. Honestly, I screwed up when I did this and I bought the shock tower independently, then bought these aluminum mounting brackets. Drag Race Concepts actually offers a whole sh uh, shock tower and rear sway bar kit, which would be a much, much smarter purchase because I later want to add Add the rear sway bar kit to this anyway so i will leave a link not for these two independent individual products but for the actual whole unit with the sway bar down below and then that way you'll have absolutely everything as you buy it the last part that we have here from Drag Race Concepts is actually this very fancy little motor plate here. So we get rid of the aluminum plate and we swap it over for this carbon fiber. Should be good for us overall. Uh, however, you know, do note that when you do this, you will also be looking at, you know, losing that aluminum heat sink. So if you're having motor overheat issues, you may want to consider this one. I took these one, two screws off and then this whole external cover comes off. Now we will need to uh, take out the motor well so the two screws here for the motor mesh that'll disappear then we'll need to take the whole slipper assembly apart and we'll of course be very careful with where is that slipper set make sure that we get all the parts in the correct order as we put it back together and make sure that we are setting that slipper in the same orientation that we had before this is just a direct drop in piece once you get the slipper clutch off so in case you do screw it up And now carbon fiber plate is back on, gears are meshed appropriately, slipper clutch is adjusted. We are in good shape. I am also going to run without that diff cover on there because we honestly run in a pretty clean track. I'm not too worried about it actually getting you know, any much dirt or rocks or any kind of situation like that in there. So I'm comfortable leaving it open. You obviously are gonna have to make that choice depending on your location. With the front shock tower done, rear shock tower done, and the motor mount, let's go ahead and give the truck a whole weighing here and see just how much impact have we had so far. If you remember now, look at that, look at that, we're doing the thing. So this was about 2000, I think 12, 2020, something like that. We are down to 1960. The next part that we're looking at is this beautiful carbon fiber ESC mount from Exotech. It comes with it and two spacers, two black spacers, and the screws to go in it. This ESC plate sits roughly right about here. So you can take these two factory screws out of that bulkhead and you can place this in its place. It'll go right above where the battery mounts there and you can move the ESC and I'm actually going to be able to move the ESC and the receiver over to, over to it both freeing up these side trays right here uh, it's going to move the weight back just a slide about so it'll probably improve our rear weight bias or increase our rear weight bias a little bit um, you can use any combination of these spacers that you want to get to the height that you need i'm going to probably go ahead and put both of them on just in case to make sure that all of my batteries do actually fit in underneath it uh, but then you know obviously if i can lower that weight down or get rid of some stuff i'll definitely be looking at that in the future to make sure that i have clearance for doing this I'm gonna actually take off the receiver box lid first as with most Exotech products fits on there just amazing so really good right there looks great uh, I did uh, go ahead and unhook the motor wires here to make some room next thing I'm gonna do is come in pop off the ESC pop the receiver out of the uh, waterproof box and I'm going to move both of these items to this ESC plate here uh, note that that will be reducing and removing the waterproofing from any of your electronics on the receiver good news is it looks like this is actually already all conformal coded uh, from the straight from the factory now check this neat little package out so got the transmitter underneath this screw over here to the side ESC fits beautifully on here long way with the power switch right next 
next to it. Wires can all run over to the receiver here. Servo has plenty of distance to make it back there. Also, haven't tied the servo up yet. But look at that. Nice and neat, compact, right there. Cleans up this whole center section of this chassis. And that's because this is where we're going next with all of this stuff open it's actually freed this whole section up here to be useless as it turns out so i'm going to take my cordless tool and i'm going to just cut out everything inside this and get rid of this whole piece of plastic it'll still leave this center chassis it'll still leave we'll still leave this outside rib here and that'll actually still help with the strength i'll add leave this rib and this center section here but this whole center section here we will get rid of just remove that weight from the chassis i'm gonna get rid of these side little nerf bars also these will be my new nerf bar is this end right here now some of you may be thinking that i have gone absolutely crazy here and have lost my mind what i'm thinking honestly is that this whole chassis is something like 15 dollars so even if this grand experiment goes horribly awry and like i try to race it and the whole thing like snaps in the middle because it's not strong enough or i don't know whatever whatever may possibly go wrong here it's like a 15 dollar experiment so if we cut it up and it doesn't work i just get a new one and slap it in there <laughs> I, bet, I bet nobody else is doing this right now <laughs> check this out we got we have parts of plastic absolutely everywhere and i have two huge holes through the center of my chassis uh, i still need to get the sanding disc on here and clean up some edges around the side just so that it doesn't you know i want to cut my fingers or something as i grab it and then i'm going to go ahead and like i said take two screws out of either side and get rid of uh, these little nerf bars also because uh I just made really big Nerf bars, as it turns out. I don't need little Nerf bars anymore. The last step of this absolutely crazy process that I've been going through here is the body itself. We all know the short core struck bodies tend to parachute. They tend to hold air. So it's time for me, you probably have to sacrifice this roadside RC, but it's time for me to come in here and open up some of these holes that this body has back here in order to let air out. It's going to make a very minimal impact, of course, to the overall body weight. But again, just using the handy, handy rotary tool, we're going to come in and just open up some of this in order to let that air pass through and hope that that's enough to let you know a little bit of weight out and enough air to move through so that i can accelerate easier jump smoother all that kind of stuff well i can't say that really looks great <laughs> but it works it should definitely let the air out we'll see maybe the folks at my track maybe they'll be happy with that maybe they won't uh good news is i have a backup body up there that someone gave me so even if this is just a horrible idea i do have a backup but now it is a moment of truth. So when we started, we were over 2,000 grams. We now put the truck up on the scales, body, everything, 1861. Oh my gosh. So we dropped another 100 grams by taking out those chunks of the chassis and the chunks of the body. From the track and the truth is it did pretty well actually i had to make some corrections almost immediately like i mentioned before the toe and everything toe and camber were set a little bit differently because of how that front link mounts to that front shock tower
So I guess my grand experiment like kind of worked actually, you know, uh, I, I'd still be a little bit hard pressed to really recommend that everybody goes out there and completely hacks up your chassis, but it's like 15 bucks and you can do it. You can also get those carbon fiber bits. They bolt up, they've worked nicely so far. So I will have a link to these carbon fiber parts and the stuff that I did down in the video description below. So if you are curious about taking this leap with me, you can actually go through it. And now more to be done on this truck. There's still some tuning I wanna do. One of the biggest deals I found, I got to the track and then I noticed this. The whole front, the oil out of the front shocks is just completely drained away. And I didn't even realize it. So that clearly is not awesome for traction as you're trying to race around a bumpy surface. And so I need to rebuild these shocks, maybe get some of the team associated factory team stuff while I'm at it and go ahead and really upgrade these shocks. I think it'll make a big difference in how the truck overall handles. I'm looking forward to that as we're going into this race series.